Hello and welcome to the movie podcast review of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Guys, it's here. The alien has landed. That's not a line from the movie, but I thought I'd say that. <laughs> and of course, my name is Shabazz, and I'm joined by some of the most handsome men in radio. And it's a shame because you can never see their face. And maybe, maybe that's a good thing, because you might get blinded by how handsome they are. Daniel, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Again, I, I, I'm, I'm without words that we've, we're on the other side of this now. Yes. We've, seen, we've seen the light. We've seen what so many fans have been asking for for years. We're here. And we've watched it, and we're on the other side of it now. We we've seen Zack Snyder's Justice League. The Snyder Cut has been released. Mm -hmm. It's out in the open. And we watched it on those big reels, too, that he has. It was so hard to carry them up <laughs> yeah. the stairs. And the worst part is you didn't have a projector. No. no so we had to go through each reel with, with a, a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm joined here also by the second most handsome man in this room, Anthony. Hello, everyone. Now I feel I'm, like we need a hierarchy. I am <laughs> super glad that this is all oh, over. Super glad, huh? Oh, super all, glad it's all over. Oh. It's all over. You know, no more internet craziness we watched it we've closed the chapter of the justice league and, and for me personally mm -hmm. um i can't wait to discuss it with you guys but yeah like this this idea that you know was it ever out there was it waiting to be released and now actually seeing what we were supposed to get and zach's true vision for this movie i'm um, i'm glad that we can uh talk about it and put this do yes. this. what's really interesting about this like uh, obviously us at the movie podcast we're seeing this um it's early march and you know this film doesn't come out until march 18th mm -hmm. we know that there are fan screenings and review other review screenings on march 15th so we're really watching this in a bubble yeah very similar to how we watched batman vs superman back in 2016 when there was the fan events mm -hmm. where everyone was like really high on it and then uh, when the world saw it, it went a different way. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm just really, obviously, we're, we're super privileged to have watched this already and have it sent to us to watch and review and discuss here on the movie podcast. But again, I'm just still, it doesn't feel real yet mm. that we've seen it. And I know we're, we're really kind of like, <laughs> we're building up the... We're so fresh off know, of it. You too, know, we're right? so fresh off it. We just watched it last night. Um, Wow, we're here. And, and if you're wondering what this whole thing is about, we've had a lot of episodes discussing Zack Snyder's Justice League, especially back in May when this whole news dropped that there's going to be a Zack Snyder cut of this movie. So uh, go ahead and go, go through a feed, find that episode, uh, and, and it, we really dive deep into the, the what-ifs and the what is happening. So just definitely look out for that. Yeah, if you're new, if you're listening to this review, if you're new to the movie podcast, please stick around. We have reviews on lots of movies and we have new episodes every single monday so mm -hmm. um thanks for joining us this is going to be a very fun discussion this is it's going to be a lengthy discussion i think we're we're trying to clock in for about eight to nine hours of this podcast double the length of the film double the length Zach's of the version. film uh we're gonna have a, a one hour lunch break though which we'll still keep recording <laughs> it'll just be dead silent it'll just be silent you'll just hear just like like ominous like some munching plate plates clinking and yeah. like forks and you're gonna, no you're gonna me. hear that that girl who's singing <laughs> in this in the movie <laughs> Oh, is one over here? The oh. Nor Norwegian. Nor Norwegian? Nor Norwegian. Nordic? Norwegian. Nordic. Nordic. Is, yeah. that, is that what? The, yes. Yeah, Nordic. the, the Nordies. The Nord <laughs> I don't think they like that. That it. sounds derogatory, actually. Um, I, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Justice League. Before, before we jump into that, again, want to give a quick shout out to Apple Podcasts and the fact that they have a review section on there. On that review section, there's a bunch of stars, I believe five in total. If you hit the five the fifth star something really cool happens it helps us out on the show here so go ahead hit those five stars leave us a comment you may get in one of our videos we may we may send you a kiss from the air and it'll land on your face <laughs> you say kiss from a rose kiss from a rose um, <laughs> one more anthony's favorite song as well uh one more quick thing i want to shout out uh we just want to say um big thanks to our friends at p-link who uh we are uh affiliates of now so if you run a podcast and you're not using p-link Definitely check them out at plinkhq.com. Uh, if you're wondering what plink is, they create smart links for podcasts, so you can get your listeners to the right spot 
every single time. Uh, you'll notice that we use them all the time on social media, especially on Twitter, uh, where you we have those very short links, which are great for 240 character limits or 280 character limits, whatever Twitter is now. Um, we'll get you right to the episode that you want to listen to on whatever podcast service you're listening on or whatever app you have installed on your phone. So if you're interested, if you're a podcast uh, runner and if you um, want to get your audience to use uh, to start using this to use it for yourself, check out our show notes. We have an affiliate link there. It will support our show out, but it'll also get you an amazing service that P-Link is, use, is uh, offering you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you again to P-Link. So it, it, this is an interesting time to talk about this movie because um, – we we're fortunate enough, like Daniel said, to watch it so early. And I feel like there's still information coming out about this film in the sense of how Zach wants to present it. I mean, just a few days ago, he announced that there would be chapter titles in this film. There'd be about six chapter titles. And then now as the, as the film is about to come out, there's still uh, promotional material coming out and maybe he's answering some more questions. So maybe some of the things that we might say might not be as up to date as it should be. But again, we've seen the movie. So I think we're, we're pretty much caught up on everything. I would say so. Yeah. yeah like yeah. we're, we're, we're good again. This is a full on spoiler discussion of this yeah. film. So we're going deep into the, in, into this movie, into all the parts, mm-hmm. into the epilogue. Yes, there's an epilogue for this film. Mm-hmm. So, um, we're we're not holding back on anything. Mm-hmm. So full on discussion. Also, really quickly before we even get into this, uh, we have a great conversation with Sean O'Connell who wrote the mm-hmm. release the Snyder Cut book. Where if you want to find out more about how this amazing movie mythic was film. the mythic behind this film was made, uh, definitely check out his book and definitely check out our discussion with him on the movie podcast feed now. Yeah, right. So again, six chapters in this film so let's, let's talk about chapter one don't count on it batman <laughs> that was Gosh. my piece of it's, it's not as good my as man. yours you know i can now you put me on the spot do it my man no but do your don't, don't count, count on it dresses like a bat <laughs> Oh, it's really good. You're out of your mind, Bruce Wayne. It's, really good. it's good, right? It's like Jason Momoa is right here. You know, like I could yeah. do, I, I would do a range of impressions. So okay, stick you around do, for those. You do, I now do, you do <laughs> um, Lois Lane. Lois Lane? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you tried to. Clark. Clark. Uh, That's his mother's name. Uh, I, so this, this again, uh, I think the biggest thing with the, with the Snyder Cut, you know, yes, it's being broken into parts right now. This is a four hour film. Yeah. When we got the Joss Whedon directed film back in 2017, it was two hours with credits. Mm-hmm. So now we're getting everything we've ever gone before that Zach probably shot for this film. Majority, I would say, in it. Things that feel like deleted scenes are here. They're mm-hmm. all finished or polished. They're all in this giant story broken into six parts, but still watches a whole movie. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So let's talk about the beginning of, of Justice League. So that yeah. film starts off Batman trying to find this this crook who's, uh, I guess, Robin. But, I, but as, even before that, though. What's before that? The Superman scene is before oh that. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. I'm so Henry Cavill yeah, so opens we, with the we CG. Get this, we get this CG shot of, 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 well, not CG shot, but there's a shot of Superman, and I guess a building was on fire, and he probably saved people, and these kids are interviewing him. Uh, and then it cuts to Batman trying to find this robber. Let's talk about how... Zack Snyder's Justice League opens, and it opens up pretty much right away with the death of Superman at the mm-hmm. end of Batman versus Superman. Right. And before we even get into that, actually, like, let's talk about this film is presented in this four by three aspect, this IMAX, uh, you know, film that it was shot. Um, did that bother you guys? I think at first, like when we were seeing the trailers, especially us who like who were making like instagram posts yes. and stories for it it was a little annoying because a big watermark but it's a it's a very unique aspect ratio in the sense that you don't traditionally see that at home but in an imax theater if it was taking up the whole screen we wouldn't have thought anything of it mm-hmm. right but seeing that on the screen yes at first it was like oh those parts of my screen weren't being used but after it starts you just kind of roll with it right in for me i didn't mind it watching it i think in the long run I probably would Mm because it feels like I want to see my TV screen filled with this image. And if I were to buy it, I would want it to be, you know, a full screen shot rather than these crops. So I didn't mind it watching 
it the way we watched it. It didn't bother me. I just think like in the longevity of this film and maybe watching it again, I would rather have it filled in. Yeah, and I mean, I think the big thing with that, as we know, like this version is Zack Snyder's Justice League. He's going to do what he anything that he wants with this one, right? He's it's for better and for worse. It is fully his film, and he's like, you know what? Entire movie is going to be this aspect ratio, yeah. and I'm going to do it this way because I want it to look this way. And guess what? I also want to do it black and white, but we're going to give you color for Thank this God. time. Yeah, because the colors are great in this one. The colors are great. So yeah, again, it starts off, you know, the, the titles are kicking in, Superman's dying, and his, 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 death, his deathly cry is his, echoing yeah. throughout mm-hmm. the universe. Almost. Sending shockwaves. Shockwaves. And I absolutely loved this because it, it showed what was happening he was setting everything up so well without saying so little but saying so little sorry yeah it this is literally superman's death is literally the beacon that is it's the bell has been rung as we heard zach uh, jesse eisenberg say it superman's death cry is what awakens the mother boxes you know like and that's a big difference from what we've gotten in the the joss version where it was just you know like they're sensing fear and they can smell fear and like They'll explode, and for some reason, when they explode, they'll show the three boxes because they have to keep hammering at home that there's these three boxes. Where in this one, these three mother boxes have been awoken by Superman's cry. So one in Themyscira, one on uh, with the with man with I guess with Cyborg, and the other in Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of how the whole story is set in motion. Where it's um, that's what kind of calls Steppenwolf to Earth because mm-hmm. he wants to try and gather these mother boxes and create a inhabitable home and for i guess for dark side to find the zero life equation which we find out as well too there's a solid 10 minutes of credits in the beginning of this film a lot of credits yeah a lot of credits and i think what i liked about this movie was the first half which is basically two hours of a movie um i really enjoyed because it felt the most different from what we got before it's true yeah because there was again more depth now what what made the justice league suck so much ass was it just, it, it, it didn't get what was happening. You didn't know why it, it felt so disjointed and disconnected from what was previously given to us. The tone didn't match. The, the, the narrative didn't match. So to, to see now this being fulfilled felt a lot better. Mm-hmm. It was nice to see that. And I mean, this and part one is all about, you know, Batman kind of assembling this team of heroes that we first see in Batman versus Superman. Now we have him. Uh, you know, in that scene on horseback, trying to get, you know, Arthur Curry to join him and also to get, you know, Ezra Miller's Flash to join him and, you know, eventually Cyborg as well, too. And this is a great scene. Like, this is one of those sequences, like, man, like you're watching it. And I was like, man, why would they? There's so many just such gold moments here. He's like, man, why would they cut this? Like, mm-hmm. there's so many just such great moments here. This why why would you want to remove this from a movie? And I get you're you're on a on a, a timetable they had to hit two hours for some stupid reason the first time but like there's such phenomenal moments character moments between these characters that you lose out by cutting it mm-hmm. and that whole that whole sequence too in uh i guess that bar with uh aquaman's there and like we don't have that silly scene of like where you're inserting like ben affleck where he's like more slender than you have him where he's a bit more you know, a bit more beefy, beefy yes. Ben, mm-hmm. beefy Ben, and then it's with like inserting the humor where he's kind of like like laughing and stuff, and then you see a random mural with Aquaman <laughs> holding a fish <laughs> and the three boxes. That, <laughs> like, why is this here? That doesn't mean anything. And the boxes are there. He's holding fish in his hand. I'm like, like what, what's what the correlation this? here between these? Uh, but that's not in this version. It's just a straight up, just a great scene of you know of Bruce Wayne trying to find out and kind of like he he knows who Arthur Curry is. He's just trying to like to to get him to come out. And uh, it, it's an awesome scene. Yeah. It's a really cool yeah. scene, seeing that. And then we get the, the infamous land, you know, like, dresses like a bat, you know, like... like You're out of your mind, Bruce Wayne. Good. That was a good one, you know, like, good. it was, it's like, like it was a, it's an awesome scene. And then, like, it just continues. And, like, the pace, especially in the first part, I think is a lot stronger yes. um, than what we got before. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you, you, you could clearly see the differences between the pacing and just the feel of this movie. Um, compared to the weed and cut, it just, it was all over the place. You felt very lost and very confused on why the paths they chose, uh, to go down that movie and watching Zach's version of this, it just, it calmed that it's still a very thick story, but it made it 
easier to to watch it's a lot more coherent of a yeah. story like again like not it's like again like we're going to get to our actual opinions on it we're just kind of breaking down like the story like it's such a it is a lot of story here it's, there, it's, it's, it's so much too story. much story it's, too much story it's a lot of story yet the story isn't different if that like the story sense. from what we got in 2017, you mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It's the, still the main that. the main kind of flags are there. Yeah, but how we kind of get to them and everything in between is very different. I think if people are expecting a 180 degree different film, they're going to be s- severely disappointed. Yeah, I don't think it's it's again all of the the stuff from the Josh Joss version version the Whedon cut the yeah. Whedon cut isn't here, but what we do get is similar like similar enough but much better much oh, better yeah. made i just think too in the sequence we also got the amazing sequence of you know wonder woman mm-hmm. at the bank oh my god such a better version of what we got in 2017 this, this movie's rated r by the way and this that is a hard scene, r this that scene really really shows that she she comes through kicking that door and she's throwing these dudes around and all you see is blood splatter and like <laughs> they'd hit the wall they're dead these people are not like these kids yeah. are at, on a field trip looking like, oh my god, why are all these yeah. men dying? Uh, they're more tra- they're more traumatized. Not at the, <laughs> the robbers who killed a bunch of people in front of them. More it's Diana just just hauling ass in the scene, just throwing people. The way that she's fighting is so cool. Like she's being so cool. shot at and she's just moving her hands so fast, blocking these bullets, uh, kicking ass. And again, yes, when she throws the briefcase up in the air. Th- just the visuals that Zach's showing here are so cool. They're like, oh man, I'd print that here, or I'd take this and print it there. And like it's just so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome scene. Um, we also are introduced more to uh Ezra Miller. We're getting more backstory on him, and uh we see that infamous scene with him and Iris. Uh, very interesting. Moment. Very you know, like it more of like more character building for him where you see he's trying to apply for a job and mm-hmm. there's like a car accident that happens and he saves it. One thing I will say what's really interesting with this with this film is the music choices. Oh yeah. Uh again, not talking about the score, but I mean the actual songs that they use. We will talk about the score, yeah. but not it's right very now. they're very unique. They're very Zack Snyder. Yeah. Where it's just like you would think it would be something here where it's uh, uh, some type of score, but it's like, no, here's like this like melodic, just kind of like ballad. Playing. This needle drop will just kick in of a song, and it's maybe a song that you've heard before, maybe you haven't, but it's just sometimes out of place. It feels sometimes out of place for and sure, and especially there, there's a moment with um with Wonder Woman. Anytime they show it to Mascara or or Wonder Woman, there's always this one Norwegian lady going like, oh, are you it's like it's a recurring theme throughout this film with like the the operatic, yeah. Um, cry that we hear where it's just like every it, time she's on screen it's a, it feels a little too much yes like mm-hmm. it feels like again there's a lot of things in this film that we're gonna say yeah it's a little excessive it's a little it's a lot this is a but at lot four hours so at four hours you're hearing this this nor <laughs> nordic cry a lot a throughout lot. this like it's um, every this time she comes on screen they it's like they can't not have it yeah it's almost like before where we used to hear her like the amount yeah, of time sense. where we'd hear in this film but then we also hear like the like saw like cry as well too yeah, so we hear yeah. a lot that was my that was my impression i of thought it was song. really good too um yeah, it's it's so interesting to to break down this film because it's, it's so long. It's so long. It's so long. long. It, I think the best part, some of the best new parts of this film were the the sequences where we got to see, um, Stephen Stephen Wolf interact with his world on Apocalypse and right. what what really brought him there and why he was there because I felt like he was just there beforehand, but now we understood. He was there because he was outcasted by Darkseid. Uh, Dark and Dasad, who's now this new character, he's like, we'll say he's Darkseid's right hand man. He yeah. is trying to, well, he's trying to figure out, you know, not figure out, but he's trying to get him to do certain things that will make him come back to this world because he wants to get back to this world. He's doing Steppenwolf. Does. Steppenwolf. Yeah. He's doing all these things to get back to apocalypse mm-hmm. and um i really enjoyed Ste- stephen wolf's step step is stephen wolf or stephen wolf stephen 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 wolf is uh somebody else yeah stephen wolf yeah, yeah. stephen wolf he his character development really grew and i oh, now i understand he has why. a character now yeah he has a character he wasn't just i'm here because i'm evil and i'm gonna take over the world he was mother he was, he was less I? of a nerd yeah. yeah and i really enjoyed his armor like his armor 
Yeah, well, he looked really cool, good. Man. I love how it was like organic in a way, yet it was like breathing in certain elements. Yeah. Um, this pretty much now takes us to to you know Act Two of this film or Part Two, where it's the Age of Heroes, and it starts to explain, you know, who is Dark Side, what happened, and you know, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman now starts to explain to Bruce like, hey. The Age of Heroes, and this is what happened. Um, Darkseid, you know, came to Earth and tried to take over, and yet, and this was the one planet that fought against him yeah, and right. won. Because we had the Amazons united, we had the Lanterns. Atlant- Lanterns, we had the Atlanteans, we had the old gods, we had a and great humans. Zeus, and we had a great uh, Ares show up as well. You know, we had nice cameos from like David uh, Thule's. Thews and uh, like Robin that. Wright. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, we had their characters coming back, which was great to see from Wonder Woman. But that main shot, that dark side is that villain. It yeah. was before it was Stephen Wolf. It was, Ste- it was yeah. Stephen Wolf. And yeah. in, in the 2017 Justice League, that whole sequence was showing, like, Stephen Wolf coming to conquer Earth. Um, and then that was which it. Which doesn't make any sense. Which didn't make sense. And then now it's like, okay, we're seeing it was dark side here on Earth trying to conquer. And he kind of gets injured and he, and he goes away. Yeah. Right, but Steppenwolf is was here. Who we saw, we guess we saw him at the end of Batman vs Superman as well. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I think like him and I think Cyborg would be the ones who probably got the best character um, rejuvenations throughout the Snyder cut. I, I'd even put Flash in there too. Because yeah. I, I I enjoyed him a lot more in this movie. Yeah, because he wasn't used so much to be like comedic relief, yeah. random one liners. St- you know? Still funny, but it was earned. I yeah, it, it wasn't like annoyingly funny. It was like in the moment funny. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we get uh, the Age of Heroes uh, part where yeah we're starting to see the team come together. Mm-hmm. Where we at least see like Batman recruit Flash. Mm-hmm. Um. We see I guess Aquaman begrudgingly show up show up and i guess we see more scenes of atlantis where we're seeing willem dafoe finally now amber heard uh, as, amber mara. Heard as mara so we're seeing uh volko is his name that's it Volko. Yeah. um so we're seeing them more like it's like it's a lot of things that again that we start to see little hints at in in joss joss's version or in the whedon cut but we're seeing them just fully fleshed out here and again like this is it's still so weird talking about it because i'm like yeah we we've seen it we've seen like his whole kind of vision play out. Um, and now we're here just like on the other side of it. It's like still, still blowing my mind. Right. There's an interesting thing with um, DC films where early Marvel movies used to have this issue of, of continuity where, you know, one movie would have one thing and then the second film would almost retcon that in a way. Um, but I feel like in DC, this shouldn't have been happening because they shouldn't be this, like they shouldn't be making these mistakes. But all of a sudden now, uh, Willem Dafoe has this long, luscious hair. And I'm sure you can, you can grow <laughs> hair, that's fine. But yeah, it looks a little rough. It felt like two different characters all of a sudden. And he did not look good with the long hair. He looked kind of perverty. Yeah. Um, and then Mara has like a British accent all of a sudden, which I'm confident she didn't have in Aquaman. She didn't have a British accent in Aquaman. There were some words that she spoke a bit more like proper and royal Yes. But like in this film, she has like a full on like British, British accent. accent. Or it's at least, and then some scenes she doesn't because she's she kind of comes back a, a bunch throughout this film. Yeah. She, but, when she came back for that, that ending, she's, yeah. she has a British accent. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's but even like also when she was talking, she's like, oh, what are you talking about? Yeah. You queen, queen, Ma-. like, I was like, hold on, like, hold on a second. Hold yeah. the phone. Yeah. Like, she didn't have this accent in the yeah. man. So but it was I, interesting. But I loved how Zack showed Atlantis. I loved, you know, the visuals there. And, and Aquaman's character, I thought it was really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, he... I think Aquaman starts to get a lot more of a... Becomes a lot more likable in his own film. Because mm-hmm. this film, he's just a lot more just like, I don't want to be here. I'm not doing this. I don't want to be part of this. Yeah. You know? But, like, then he starts to be, like, part of the team. Mm-hmm. And then you start to, like, like him a lot more and stuff. But... Yeah, there's there's a lot more of other sequences where we're kind of seeing where these mother boxes are. That whole um, that mascara scene where their mother box is kind of hiding there. What a different scene oh that God. was! Mm-hmm. Epic. You know, like a similar idea in the Whedon cut where yeah, Steppenwolf comes in, he takes it, but like this scene is just like fully fleshed out, full battle sequence, just blood and guts everywhere. Oh yeah, it's like it is a hard R. This movie. Yeah, really, really cool sequences. Um, the and then we start to get kind of a bit more information about, about Cyborg. Right? Yeah, which which would be, I think, part three, we would yeah. start to get that word. So, beloved mother, beloved son. Yeah, where we're getting a, the his kind of, his backstory of being a football player, having issues with his dad, his mom and him get into a car accident, and then his mom passes away, sadly, and now his, he's left with his dad, who um, 
you know, kind of steals his body and uses a mother box to bring him back, which mm-hmm. we which we saw in Batman versus Superman, but it was changed in we didn't cut as well too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean Cyborg gets a lot more screen time in this movie, which is great. It's great to see Ray Fisher doing his thing. I also think that it's there was a lot of things here that just felt like it was too much deleted scene feeling. Like yeah. it was just like Maybe we don't need to see all of this. Like, there's a sequence of where he, you know, taps into it and he f- finds this woman, this random lady who we kept speculating, like, oh, what, what, what's her importance? Yeah. And she's, he, they show her life and she's very poor and she can't afford things. And then he hacks into her bank account and gives her like $100,000. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's cool. I'm like, but who is this lady? Like, why right. is she important? And it would have been. If it was just meant to be like a small little moment, then that moment should have been just two minutes long. Oh, less they, than that. Less yeah. than that, yeah. But they spent so long, they kept showing so much of her life that we were all speculating like, oh, maybe she's the woman that hit him with the car yeah. or maybe someone she's involved. But I, th- yeah. I think during that sequence, it's you hear his dad say, you can control anything at this moment. You could do anything. Yeah. You can help people. You see like the Wall Street bull and yeah. like the other thing fighting. I'm like, okay, this is But it just felt off and if just... It felt long, and I think that's the one of the biggest cons of this t- movie is you're trying to tell these stories in such a short amount of time, character stories for characters that don't have movies yet, right? And it just doesn't work. No, it's not working because they just you don't have enough background for them to really build this league like Marvel has, um, and that's and I think right now. Their formula is the best formula to make a more cohesive, coherent type of story where you have these types of characters. You just can't throw them into a movie and expect Zack to tell a story in two hours. Yeah, because you don't. You get even four hours. Four hours. And then you have it and it's very long. And it's yeah. like, well, I don't really, mm. I don't agree with that. And you, you see that, man, if, they, if, if Cyborg had his own film and Aquaman had his own film and then they made this movie... It would have made so much more sense. Yeah, because you're you're telling like Cyborg gets a huge chunk of time of the screen time in this section, where it's like yes, it's nice to learn more about him, but it's also not as interesting as you right. would hope it is. It also just feels overly long of him mm-hmm. trying to figure out who he is. Where again, this film like we're going to get to our official I guess like review or discussion like as a whole, but I think the only thing that the Whedon cut does better is just working again and it wasn't for better because a lot of that movie doesn't make sense but i at least think it 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 just kind of got to the point faster where this one i'm glad that what's being fleshed out but there's still a lot in it that i'm like maybe you could have refined it a bit more to tell a a better to just to kind of like we know we get the idea what's happening with cyborg we don't need to see everything the sequence with diana when she gets the arrow from her mother in greece uh, the uh, the in Athens, yeah, and she f- goes down this you know this hidden yeah. passage. That's like ten minutes. She doesn't say a word in it. Yeah, she's just like almost like an Indiana Jones. Yeah, it's moment. like to- she's raining. But it's tomb. just it's it doesn't really like it we doesn't don't need add much. Like because because we- we're waiting to see the team come together, right? It's yeah. a Justice League movie. At the end of the day, we're we're waiting to see the team team up like when that scene started, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like we're we're seeing it, and then it kept going and going and going. I'm like, oh. Okay, well, look, look, let's get to the point now. Let's get to why she's in this tomb and why she has an arrow. And then when it finally does, and you start to see, you know, Darkseid's mural and everything, and like, oh, okay, we're 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 getting to it. But again, you're, like you said, Anthony, it it took too long to get there. Yeah. Um, I also think this is the chapter, I believe, where Martha, uh, Clark Kent's mom, meets up with uh, Lois Lane. Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's it's either this scene or the part four. Like, it's interesting because it's it's a little. Bl- blurred because it's a long film a long film we watched it last night i know we should be totally up on it but like it's just a lot because a, a lot happens it's a lot, it's a lot. Uh, yeah so yeah continue yes yeah, so this this scene um you know it kicks in we we start to see lois at her apartment she's still kind of grieving clark's death um and martha comes in and what we saw kind of earlier on in the film is she had to close down the farm and move out and she's in a u-haul truck driving around i'm assuming she's homeless or whatever she's doing <laughs> we have no idea it's not very explained right um but anyway so now she's sitting down with with um, lois talking about you know you gotta you gotta move on in life and you know, be clark, strong be and- strong and clark clark wants you to come back to the land of the living and then she walks out of the door 
and the camera pans up and her eyes are red and i'm like what why are her eyes red and then the camera pans down and then all of a sudden you start to see her shape shift and it's martian manhunter dun 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 <laughs> and it's yeah. general swanwick from the man of steel and batman vs superman movies finally in full Martian Manhunter form, which was hinted for by Snyder, but never in the movies. It was never explicit in the films, but always right. Snyder would be like, hey, it's that guy, I don't want to tell you. Right. But, but it's also like, so like we've seen Lois kind of established in this movie as not as, she's obviously heartbroken over losing Clark, but she's also not like the broken person that she was in the Whedon cut where it's just like embarrassingly like, yeah, she was too sobby. You know, like it was too just like, Oh, I'm a broken person now, you know, like here's these stupid alien probe jokes on this random news network. You know, it was awful, awful sequence where I love the scene between Martha and Lois, but having it revealed that it was Martian Manhunter, I'm just like, I don't, there's no payoff for it. I had it. more questions than, than feeling resolved at that you know, moment. At because point. he also, like, Martian Manhunter also knows, like, how does he know that, Mar- that, that Martha was, yeah. lost her home? And, like, it's, like, little things like that. Well, like, yes, I, I'm sure he could have been keeping tabs, but it was just, like, there's no, there no payoff for that sequence. No. Well, he's, it's not the last time we see him. No. But there's also no payoff in that, that sequence to, you know, like, I, I was even, like, thinking like well maybe like maybe like it would have been cool if martian manhunter was like at that superman fight against the league and maybe he's the one who brings him back to smallville with lois and stuff like that but like it's there's just there's just so there's just so much happening that's like i don't think we needed this reveal here also like lois could have been looking through the peephole just like just saying goodbye to martha making sure she walks down the stairs okay she's an older woman now and she's like what the who's this alien (laughs) wouldn't it be cool if there if his character was utilized as a support system for all the members 100 percent. you just didn't know until like you didn't know he was maybe playing uh, we'll say Diana for Cyborg, or maybe um, uh, he was like mostly, maybe pulling the uh, strings behind. Yeah, it, right? he was like he was morphing into all these characters just to f- help them get back together and form this alliance. Maybe he was this mentor to Aquaman, like just using that character. Because if you're gonna throw in this character, you just don't throw him in for like five minutes, especially having five him sequence, especially having him as like a, a a player in both Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. Having him only to be revealed now, it feels strange. It feels very strange. And I think what bothered me about it the most was General Swanwick has a relationship with Lois. Like, they they meet up. Like, in Batman vs. Superman, she walks into the office. I mean, not office. The washroom. And starts talking about the bullet and everything. Yeah, and they have their meetings and stuff they're like their meetings. that, right? So, they have a relationship. So, why couldn't it not have been General Swanwick just meeting up with her in general, being like, hey, like... I know you're going. Uh, granted, they're not friends, but they still had enough of a relationship where yeah. I would have believed that. It felt like maybe that was an add-on or something because, like, the way he leaves, like the way Swanwick I, or Martha leaves the apartment, feels very disconnected. Like Amy Adams wasn't there, right? Because usually, if you're saying bye to somebody, you at least see them at the door. The door closes. Like it's a shot, like from the hallway mm-hmm. closing it. You just see it, and then you see it transform into. Martian Manhunter. Which uh, looks interesting. I mean, it's not my favorite design they could have gone with. It looks right. a little Shape of Water for me, like yeah. Alien from Shape of Water, but it's cool seeing him. I love Martian Manhunter. Yeah. But, and I think Swanwick is a great choice to play him, but it's, again, it's just like you're missing the development of why he's there. Why he's there, yeah. Right? Anything else in this chapter that you guys wanted to talk about before we move on to chapter to, four? I, I, it's all a blur to, I'm yeah. trying to remember what part of this chapter, like what sequences were in this chapter. Um, Three, it was really on. Uh, yeah, because everything I think everything with Atlantis happens here too. Yeah, Cyborg the, here. Does he the Steppenwolf steal the mm-hmm. Mother Box in the sequence as well too? And yeah. and Arthur saves Mara yeah. from being destroyed. Right, that's when he finally meets up with Steppenwolf and goes like, "Oh, okay, so you're the big baddie." Yeah, okay. And I think is this also the sequence where we have the the tunnel fight, uh, the in, in underneath where the hostages are. Uh. I don't think so. I think that's four. I Wouldn't think that be four? I, I feel like that was it's either three or four. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 around, again, it's, it's hard. It's to... around this part that we get that sequence. So either three to four. So chapter four is called Change Machine. Um, and that's kind of where, yes, now we're getting that sequence in the first film where they all try to get the, uh, the parademons that have captured a bunch of these hostages. Right. We, get, we get Commissioner Gordon now in Commissioner the scene. Commissioner Gordon, yes. We get that meetup on the rooftop. Yeah. Um, so great, great scene. Like, uh, Love J.K. Simmons. We finally get that that shot of Batman on the um, on the the death 
the gargoyle. On the gargoyle. Yeah. You know, that awesome scene we get to see them together. And then that whole that whole sequence in the tunnels is so much better. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. It's so much more fleshed out. The fighting is fantastic. The sequence looks beautiful. Like yes. you could tell that this was a sequence that like was gonna be really gonna be the star of the show in that twenty seventeen one, which really fell flat. But you get so much more like this exposition with these characters and what's happening, why this is happening, and this again fantastic action and great music in this too i remember in the original one the the one thing that i liked in in whedon's cut this moment was you know flash was a little nervous about saving all these people and right like, you know and and batman's like just save one yeah like that's it and i thought that was really cool in this one he's still kind of nervous but it, it's less of a flash saving people and it's just a collective team effort right. which mm-hmm. makes more sense really because it is yeah. the justice league and again aquaman isn't here yet we're still seeing just diana we're seeing cyborg we're seeing flash and, and batman just rescuing these hostages killing some parademon ass and also yeah. fighting yeah. uh steppenwolf and, they, and this is where steppenwolf reveals like oh wonder woman's different because you know she has the old gods in her yeah um yeah i, I missed that line too that like you know that saved just save one yeah because like it feels like a like a, a batman, batman trying to, thing a batman thing like this would be like you could do this like this is your pe- pep talk do it yeah um so yeah little, little that line was missed again i don't if that was a weeden line it could have been or it could have been maybe uh Ultimate. zach using a different 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 take maybe yeah right um but they kind of get right into kicking ass in this and um it's an awesome sequence yeah. it looks great it it plays great um and then we see you know aquaman kind of being revealed at the end awesome way for him to be introduced really cool reveal. through the water just kind of like he just kind of like a silhouette fa- like he like fades in almost yeah um and it's really cool and like from that moment on like you know the team's together now and yeah. like they're talking about these mother boxes what they are um what they need to do to protect them because you know steppenwolf already has two mm. um and then anthony was saying how like we're earlier that you know every time steppenwolf kind of collects uh one of these mother boxes he puts them in this i guess because because steppenwolf this whole time is building a base for them which is what we, what that russian city right. is in the jaw in the weed and cut right um every time he puts one in he does like a facetime call with <laughs> with uh Desaad, who's just like hey man just giving you an update yeah, like, so this is what i've got so far what yeah. do you think <laughs> Um, so he's kind of like updating him like, yes, like, you know, this life, this planet has zero life on it, which we don't really, or is it zero, zero life equation? Uh, anti-life. Anti-life life. equation, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, that we don't really know what, what it is, what it is, but it's like, yeah, this planet has it. This is this planet here. And, uh, you know, Desaad is kind of like, it's, it's like he's using Steppenwolf, but he's also telling like, he wants to probably take credit for everything. Right. right? Um, and you're just kind of seeing every time what happens, and I don't think it's here that we see Dark Side kind of revealed in the little the goo. No, thing. So, I think that's on. when the third one comes, right? The third mother box yes, joins yes, them. Yes, yes, because then he's like, that, "Well, we'll we'll talk about it yeah. when we get there." Because- but but we're we're seeing like they're 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 really establishing Steppenwolf more, which is great. The parademons are actually a lot scarier in this yeah. as well too, which yeah, is I, I again. I liked Steppenwolf in this movie. Yeah, yeah, he was a lot. Again, he's, he's not the menacing. greatest villain, no. but he's the best version that we could have possibly gotten yes. from him. He's yes. like he's a joke in the Whedon oh version. God. He's awful. He's even such a dweeb. Even his uh, his look looks so dumb. Like yeah. he's just he's so intimidating and scary in this. It's great. This is such he's the probably one of the highlights of this of this cut of the mm-hmm. film is just how much better he is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um. This the sequence also brings in the last mother box that Cyborg has. They had this whole discussion on what they need to do, very similar to what we've seen in the Whedon cut. Let's resurrect Superman. Yeah, they go back to the Batcave, yeah. or uh, I just guess Bruce's bunker or whatever. Yeah, um, kind of talking about like you know this is a change machine, the change machine. Like this is potentially what we can do. We don't get any of the shitty dialogue. Was like, oh, is that what Steve Trevor told you? Like yeah. those. Like those quippy dialogues. Oops. We don't get that scene with Bruce and Diana walking, uh, walking and kind of talking. And she's wearing like, you know, that big like red mm-hmm. the cape thing, cape that she's wearing. We don't and get he's that. Like, he's his back is hurting. Yeah. That's because he's been hitting the bottle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, but, but yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, it's basically a discussion. Like we're going to bring Superman back to life. Yeah. And this is what we 
can do to bring him back and use these machines to do it. And they talk about it in a way where it, it's it's like they're aware of the risks and they, they paint it as such by saying, hey, listen, uh, if we do this, we're also going to call back Steppenwolf and we're going to expose ourselves here. And they're like, yeah, we're, we're counting on it kind of thing. Like, let's let's see what happens. Right. But also this is where Bruce says, like, it's not the mother boxes that are calling Steppenwolf because the mother boxes have been... Um, uh, like, why weren't the mother boxes activated before? Like when uh, Superman with when because Superman was here, it was Superman dying that called them. Mm-hmm. So it's Superman being resurrected. That's probably when to call them yeah. to them, right? Yeah, this, 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 they they knew that 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 would happen at this yeah. point. So, oh, because oh, because uh, when Cyborg was created, Steppenwolf wasn't called to the mother boxes, right? Right. It was only when Superman died that Steppenwolf was called here. Correct. So now we're we're we get the scene that we got before, but what in the Whedon version was a reshoot with Cyborg and Flash talking. Right, and Flash was all like making the jokes, like, "Oh, is this like Pet Cemetery type of thing?" Mm-hmm. All of that. Where in this version, uh, Aquaman and Wonder Woman are also at the gravesite, kind of they're talking, doing their own thing, while Cyborg and the Flash, uh, respectfully, obviously, um, dig up Clark's body and throw him into the van. And it's it's a cool character moment seeing the four of them there, because mm-hmm. then you also have Batman just like having scenes with Alfred, yeah. talking about everything that's going on. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. We also have a weird subplot here where batman's kind of like yeah you know this plane doesn't fly <laughs> yeah <laughs> where she big, doesn't she doesn't want to fly does not want to fly you know yeah. you had a bigger plane in your hangar that you just <laughs> when remember that huge plane he had when he went to go see um uh, aquaman oh yeah it was a it's a literally a bomber and yeah. he's like i gotta get this one to work this is the one that we need yeah. to work i don't for like the reason. other one it's, it's, it's a 2015 model and i don't want to fly that one <laughs> yeah so uh, it's interesting also again a well, weird thing like i feel that like there was more like aside from the gillette scene like movies usually have a bit more product placement but it's interesting because i guess this one was shot afterwards it didn't feel like there was really any product placement just the other gillette than scene. the really? gillette and the bmw right uh, Mercedes. The Mercedes. Oh, Mercedes. Yeah, the Mercedes. Also, yeah, Under yes. Armour for um, um, Cyborg, who has a varsity jacket. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. he used to sell that. Yeah, it was a Under Armour. Interesting. But it, I, I feel like in this one again, it wasn't, it wasn't as on the nose. Yeah, a hundred percent. It so, was really a thing. So what's one. what's really different next is as we're now going to the base where uh, Star Labs, Star Labs to where uh, where I guess the Kryptonian ship is there. We get a lot more of kind of how they kind of planned for this where you know cyborg's hacking the machine to get past the guards um arthur's father sorry um victor's father mm-hmm. is dead, yeah uh, is there silas is there he's kind of doing his thing and basically they get in by pretending like there's some type of like contamination Bio- leak chem, yeah um everybody leaves the facility and you know the justice league just kind of strolls right in you know and yeah. silas is there and he's like no this isn't real then he sees his son and Batman and Wonder Woman and the Flash, everyone there, and he's like, "Never mind, yeah, get get out of here. So yeah. You guys got to skedaddle." And it's very similar to the scene we get in the Whedon cut. They put Clark's body in. What's really different though is that Flash, I think, takes a lot. He's like, it's a lot more developed. He's a lot more developed. He's like further back. He's like really going to like. He's getting a jump start. Yeah, sure. and like I, I think Cyborg gets a vision here as well too, where yeah. it looks like he has uh, a apocalypse, right? Yeah, he has yeah. a nightmare sequence. Where, for uh, himself. For himself. Which is very similar to what Bruce has in his vision. Is with. this when he sees Diana dead? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it cuts to, you see um, Wonder Woman is dead. She has the coins on her eyes. They yeah. do the, the funeral for her. And it's cutting to like, basically, yeah, the, the apocalypse, the end of days pretty much here with Darkseid. Yeah. Superman's holding, a, like a, I guess, a Lois Lane that's dead. Burnt. Burnt. Skel- yeah. Skeletal remains of her. And he... and there's apocalypse almost or dark side putting sorry his, uh, his, his, dark side being consoling the, him the father figure now yeah the new father figure for him yeah and there must be like some sort of father figure loss that superman has it's zach is trying to put in our mind set like maybe sublim- yeah some of the but i mean like he's scary looking dark side is a little scary looking though i'll be I, honest i'd have yeah. him as my dad yeah <laughs> well like at this point maybe he's that guy who's like see this is look at look what happened when you trusted people trust me because in batman vs superman it, it seems like batman killed yeah lois and, I, and they don't really talk about yeah. that in this but we'll, movie but we'll get to that we'll, we'll get, to, get the, to that yeah. we'll get to it it's very on. uh injustice it does game. feel like injustice yes. and i think that's again like my thing with this is like i, I i'm always just like i'm dying to see a, like a hopeful superman and i think 
Man of Steel does a good job of setting up what a future Superman could be. But then we keep kind of going back to these like, let's. But what about if a Superman was evil? Yeah. What if he was a bad guy? What if he destroyed like the world? Right. And I'm like, man, like I just wanted to see him as like that beacon of hope. Right. That was kind of established of Man of Steel. Um. So yeah, Flash runs because uh, they need enough power to, I guess, to jumpstart the mother box. The mother box. Superman comes back. It's a lo- much better sequence much where like better sequence things like explode. Clark is out there. We see him kind of like in the sky, and then. Uh, very similar to the Whedon cut where we see Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, and Cyborg all land at the, the I guess, the, um, why am I blanking out? The, the statue. The statue of Superman. Oh, the, the, yeah, the memorial. Site. The memorial. That's what the word I was looking for. Um, and Cyborg, I guess, Superman's looking at all of them and then Cyborg's, I guess, defense, mechanism. defense mechani- mechanisms kick in and decides to. Attack. I gotta attack. And then we see the fight, and it's a much better fight. Much better fight. No, do you bleed? Yeah. Line. No weird lines like that. <laughs> yeah. um, and then Bat- poor poor Batman's just like, you guys let me hear this is just running there. He's just like, man, this suit's heavy. You know? <laughs> um, and yeah, and then we see we see this fight happens, a great fight sequence. It looks great. Um, and then Batman finally gets there. I'm just trying to think, like, what, what was it different? A very similar anywhere. Um, uh, Lois comes up because Lois, I guess, was there because she visits the memorial all the time. Mm-hmm. Where in the in the Whedon version, it's Alfred that brings her, correct? Or mm-hmm. it's a car that brings her there? I think it's Alfred. It was Alfred. And remember, Superman um, in the Whedon's cut has Batman by the face, by the right. jaw, and then he just chucks him. Yeah, um, or just yeah. chucks him off, and, and he sees Lois. Yeah, when he sees Lois, this one he actually like laser eyes. Uh, Batman, Batman a couple times. And he has the gauntlets that can absorb this heat or this because of yeah. Rays, yeah. from the cri- yeah because Krypton you, gun. You saw him working on them earlier, right? Yeah. And then she shows up and says, "Clark, Clark, Clark, Clark." Um, and, and then they fly. And, away. and then they fly away. Yeah. Um, and then and Batman's there's... like, "Oh, he's like fucking." The guy's just like, <laughs> really, like you just dude took just took heat blast his arms, man. Heat blast and it took an impact from a car. Yeah, he's tired. He's Poor hurt. guy. Yeah. Um, he's, he's hitting the bottle. <laughs> so we, uh, from there, we get, uh, we get Batman. I think that's the end of that part, no? Yes. And I think we get to pretty much what we're going to now is uh, chapter five, all the king's horses. Yeah, all the king's horses, all the king's men. Couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together ba- again. <laughs> yeah. So Superman is now um, on the, f- like, in, the, in, in Smallville, back at Smallville. We have that moment. Very similar. Again, very strange that there was reshoots for this with Whedon because it's not very different no it isn't yeah it feels very similar to the scenes but that we put. I, I wish I could put these two films together and <laughs> yeah. like see, what, see some, what the difference we're gonna have some were. great YouTube videos soon of just yeah. people comparing and con- contrasting them because like it's not like like it wasn't different enough for me to be like well what was the point of the reshoots why not just use what, what Zach yeah. had knowing yeah. that you had to take his damn mustache out and he looked yeah. like a freaking weirdo it looked awful yeah, you know, it just it's just so it was just so bizarre. So we we kind of go back to the Batcave, um, where they're all kind of just like regrouping, trying to figure out what the next play is. Also, sorry, something that we forgot to mention: after the fight with Superman, uh, Steppenwolf, uh, they oh yes, comes to take the box, and it's like Silas takes it right back inside. Silas goes inside this um chamber, this, this chamber and tries to superheat it. We we're, we were believing that he's trying to destroy it, but he's actually just trying to superheat it. It kills him in the process, mm. which again, it's a strange decision. I feel like because like, I don't get the point of why Silas had to be in the chamber too while he turned it on. I, you know what, I, yeah, you know, he it's didn't like, need to be. He didn't need to die there, but he he did, and I was like, oh, okay, it's whatever. Yeah. Like, so I guess basically, we find that out character. that he marked it with heats, which is explained earlier on in the film when they talk about, oh, you know. The, the temperature that th- that this metal can reach is so hot to a point where you can actually like track it. Right. And so then when this happens and you know Cyborg's like, oh, he did this because he wanted to blah 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 blah. Yeah. Stephen Wolf just grabs the mo- mother box like, ooh, ah, this yeah. is this thing's hot, man. Like, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, it's a hot potato. So, so he he takes it, he goes back to his his base and he puts the last one in. Um, but now the Justice League find out that like, yes, okay, it's marked. They know where he is now because he's in this place cl- close to russia this old nuclear plant which is again has this big red uh dome dome force field around it which is taken down by the justice league because you know batman flies through it later but um basically this is like the final kind of team up scene mm-hmm. of um of them in the Batcave, you know trying to like 
figure out okay this is where we need to go next we got to come together we got to figure out what we can we don't know if superman's coming back but batman keeps telling alfred you know have hope he's going to come i have faith i have faith he's going to come um and they kind of fly off super cyborg of course uh the first time he saw that big flying machine he's like she wants to fly she she, it's 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 in her nature to fly she wants to fly and then he ends up solving how to get her to fly yeah which is again a strange Strange subplot to have yeah. in this movie. One part I, I don't remember if it was in the Whedon cut was Cyborg's like full face armor. That, no. That was I like that. Yeah, we I saw like it a couple he, times, which is nice. When he flies or when he's in battle, he goes like full armor with the faceplate, and I really like it. Yeah, I like that too. It looks um, really cool. But yeah, this is the point where you see Cyborg he's now has lost another, another family parent. member. Yeah. And they had this huge discussion before they go to Russia you know what to do with these mother boxes and then it just becomes the story becomes super complicated and it just like you you could see that man if this was the version that came out i don't think people would catch on because there's so much so much so much story it's not infinity stones this is like these three boxes have to be separated and then we can destroy them and the when you separate them there's these three women that are behind them the witches (laughs) They're, you're actually separating the mothers. The, the mother, and then she's like, "Man, this is so super, super." Complicated. It's it's a lot because at least on on the Marvel side, obviously, as we've said, like we've had individual films. We've introduced these Infinity Stones as a concept, not in the main movie. It was introduced in like other films where we've seen like the Tesseract. We've seen the Power Stone and Guardians of the Galaxy, where we get the history lesson of them. Right. So when we eventually, five years later or four years later, get to Infinity War. Everybody knows what the gauntlet is. Everybody knows what the Infinity Stones are. It's not a surprise. We're just telling the story. But when we're given something like Mother Boxes, which, yeah, we got like a little hint of them in Batman vs Superman, it's not enough to be like to really care about them. It just right. feels like a, the MacGuffin of Correct. this film. It's, right? very, it's very much so. And then again, like you mentioned before, Daniel, we we then are introduced to another plot device, which is the uh, all, afterlife theory? zero a- zero anti life anti life yeah anti life anti life. Which is like, why do you want this, man? And then you know. Again, we don't know what it's going to do, and then we finally have the FaceTime call with Darkseid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the third one. Third, third one, one made this connection strong enough yeah, for Darkseid. The signal here. was much better. Yeah. And then now we're, we're seeing Apocalypse. We're seeing Granny Goodness. We're seeing uh, Desaad there. We're seeing Darkseid, and Darkseid finally talks now. Yeah. He hasn't said a word yet. It's a, it's a battle between who has the deepest voice in this movie, yeah. you know, because we have uh, obviously Batman doing his deep Batman voice with the modulation. Then you have Steppenwolf, which is like super dark. Then you have Desaad, which is dark. And then Dark side is like no, he was no, just no. bass. It's me. <laughs> it's just a rumble when he talks. Yeah. <laughs> this is also, I think, the sequence where uh, Stefan Wolf finally figures out who, why Apocalypse, uh, why, why sorry, Darkseid. why Dark Side wants this planet, and he kind of has like his own nightmare sequence where he goes back in time, yeah. and figures out it was Dark Side who was here, right? That's and, and I don't know if he put won. it. In, Two, two together like oh that's why i'm here yeah right so it's it but it's it, interesting because yeah. he's like now he's like oh you were always wanting this planet from like from i guess beginning. from the beginning yeah and you lost right <laughs> a little yeah it's like, it's like okay like this is a uh, this is happening like you're, you're i like that you that know, was really good part it, yeah. of the of the story and i dug it uh, because now we're getting more of you know dark side's background and I, and I love that we got to see his omega beams occur oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like, so cool why didn't yeah. you use that in the battle you could have killed so many more amazonians yeah, yeah but you know you probably can only use it a couple times uh, take some time to eyes, recharge you know yeah i guess sure man the guy comes from a fucking different <laughs> dimension can you for real yeah recharge yeah. <laughs> he's tired Guys, hold on a second oh, hold on my eyes god my just, eyes please zeus was literally <laughs> shooting lightning bolts like continuous this guy can't use his own <laughs> you know yeah um, but again yeah very very cool and this is i think where we're now finally into chapter six uh something darker something darker uh, we're we're here in uh, Mother Russia. It looks like and, I think yeah yeah, and it looks like okay, we're finally getting yeah. They said it was close to Russia. This nuclear plant there, yeah, no families there from what it looks like. Yeah. It looks like it's a completely abandoned town. No Russian which makes a lot there. more sense. Dostoevsky, yeah, you know, like none, none of that. that. Shit. Um, it's it's this is probably one of my favorite chapters, parts yeah. of this film because this is just action beginning to end. Cool we're action. storming the space. It is. Bad ass shit. Dude, in this Superman, movie. In this when movie. he comes in. Oh my God. Great reveal, first of all. I think um, uh, Steppenwolf's just about to throw his axe on. Yeah. Is it Aquaman. Cyborg or Aquaman? Aquaman. 
Or was it Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman. I don't know. Wonder Man. Uh, anyway, so oh my I'm, God, who was it? Was it? I think it was Wonder Woman, right? Ma- I think it was, it Wonder, was Woman. Wonder Woman. It was yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah. I think it was Wonder Woman. He comes down with the axe, and then boom, Superman appears, and yeah. he just takes the blow from the yeah. axe. But he's chill about it. He's just like nothing happened. He's wearing his black suit, and then he's just like, "Listen here, bitch, I'm gonna fuck you up." <laughs> and he like yeah. cold breaths the axe and yeah. destroys it instantly. It. Yeah. Boom, and then just just non stop so fighting, so OP. and kicking ass. <laughs> he's just and it's great because and then you get we get those moments that we've seen him. Um, we get a great moment before he he comes to the base where he you know he's in this he's got his black suit. He flies up to the sky to recharge. Yeah, amazing sequence oh, with his arms out. Yeah. He, he flies. We hear the first flight music again. Like, yeah. It's beautiful, and then he's just kicking ass. He goes to see Alfred though, and I didn't understand why that was part of his journey to. To to see Alfred, yeah, because Alfred, where is everybody? <laughs> because I'm pretty sure you know where everybody is. You can li- literally hear their heartbeat yeah. from a, you know across the planet. I wish there was more payoff for that scene. It's just like, oh, you must be, you know, Alfred. You must be Alfred. Uh, yes, M- Master Kent, and then yeah. that's it. That's, and they don't really have a conversation. Or yeah. uh, it's a very quick scene. Yeah, where it's just like you could have. I think they started a podcast actually. <laughs> yeah, they're like, listen, uh, when you're done this, by the way, I'd love to have a sit down with you. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the 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 whole like street sequence, Batman in his in his Batmobile, like he's shooting parademons, and he has the the goggles on, the mask, and he doesn't even at one point he doesn't have his um hood or the his, yeah. his hood over his the cover the yeah. cover of over his face. So uh, the the car, what is it? The, the hood of the car. Yeah, the hood of the is car. It, is yeah. it the hood of the car? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, the retractable the top part. Of the, car. the top of the car, <laughs> the top is, of the car is removed, so it's just him open, and all these parademons are coming, and they have this wicked Justice League sequence where they freeze all, frame. They freeze frame, and it's Wonder Woman with the sword, Aquaman, Batman has to be in a car because they're like <laughs> speeding at the speed. Of, they're running at the speed. <laughs> they're of really fast. So bad. They're going really fast. But it was but, like, guys, me too, please. I want to be in the shot. <laughs> and it's so well done. I'm like, whoa, this was such a different feeling. Then it's Joss. like we're storming the castle, yeah. and like we're just like just he, taking these. He guys gets out. to a point where he 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 drives up the the tower that everyone's living in, or the main headquarters for yeah, for, HQ. for the dude, and he jumps out, he ejects, he batter batter rings to the the corner, and he's taking grapples? out more, grapples, <laughs> taking out parademons. Then he gets a gun. And the guy's fucking wicked with a gun. Dude, he's just sniping he's just people. Like, wasting people. Zero, like, like, no headshots. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. This kid, he does not yeah. stop. He's no scope, man. Yeah. Just this, like, he's just dropping people like, pop, with, pop, these, pop, pop, pop. with these guns. Then yeah. he gets, like, a mini gun, and he's just shooting people, too. Yeah. Like, it is just, like, balls-to-the-wall action in this It scene. is just it's really good. so fun to watch. And we again, get, it's rated R. It's rated R. We yeah. get uh, Aquaman. He does his... My man, my man. He does, but not. He doesn't do the woohoo part where he's on the Batmobile. He doesn't do that. Remember uh, that? I think he did. Did he do a woohoo? Like I think when he gets on the thing on the car, he's like, <laughs> does he get on the car? <laughs> he does get on the car. Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty confident. Yeah, I believe he does. I believe he does. I don't know. We'll man. have to go to the replay again. Yeah. The, the funniest <laughs> part was the guy he takes to the sky. Aquaman takes this parademon to the oh, sky. Yeah. And, flies. <laughs> and then he's, he surf he's, he u- uses his body as a surfboard and the bar- all the way down <laughs> from, the, from the sky. The parademon's just looking at him too, just like, uh, <laughs> dude, just kill me, please. Through a building. <laughs> Honestly, just kill me at this point. Dude, I was yeah. crying of laughter. It was, that. It was so, so funny. Because he's, he's got like the, the trident yes, through the trident. And he's just yes. like twitching there, just like. And the parademon's like, I'm not dead please yet. Please, kill just, me. And he's just kind of like, I mean, guys, we're almost at the ground, aren't yeah. we? And well, Aquaman's, yeah, Aquaman's like, is so fun to watch in this sequence. I mean, everybody is. And then we're finally inside, and we're just like, again, Everybody is just kicking ass in this sequence. You know, Batman's still just shooting people like no tomorrow. Um, chop off Steppenwolf's ear. Oh my god, yeah. Like So yeah, Superman is just kick, like jumping to when Pounded Superman is here. Pounded yeah. Superman is literally just over him, just beating the shit out of him. Yeah, he's like, stay down. You know, like he's just like, I think he's like starts biting him at one point too. <laughs> Um, no, they're just like kicking ass, and, and, and while this is happening, Cyborg is trying to separate the, boxes. separate the boxes. Flash is running around like crazy, um, in this moment, creating enough energy to, to but destroy. But then them, right? Flash gets shot, yeah, uh, by one of the parademons, and then the boxes merge, and I guess the end occurs, and like everyone melts away. 
that's now when Flash is like, okay, I got to reverse time. And I guess is now we're getting the hints of the Flashpoint. Yeah. Awesome music plays. And, his awesome power, music. and like he doesn't even know he can do this. No. no. Now he's revealing a he's power that he, he never had. Yeah. So he's now running back, like back in time to, to restart or be, you know, yeah. prepared for that yeah. shot. And, and literally seeing, see like <laughs> seeing the characters kind of reform yeah. from flesh and bone. Flesh and bone from being like destroyed. Flash is going back and then gets to the boxes and separates them, yeah. right? What a amazing sequence amazing this was. Amazing sequence. Um so that happens. Steppenwolf uh I guess goes to try and grab them and Wonder Woman just comes with her sword and is just like, "No." No. Chops his head off and his head goes flying through the portal. Where Darkseid and Saad and they're all watching. Just, everyone watching. just watching it, and he's seeing that these Darkseid's watching these heroes, and Darkseid just kind of catches Steppenwolf's head on his foot, mm-hmm. um, and he sees them, and like they're all just kind of like looking badass, looking up at him, like, "Yeah, we'll fucking kill you if you come up here." You know, I think Superman even said that at one yeah, point. I think he did. He said, "I will fucking kill you, Darkseid, if yeah. you come onto my planet again." Yeah, um, and then the portal closes, and then it's pretty much like, "Oh, they're using the old ways of magic. We'll have, we'll have to do, use the old ways yeah. to to get them." Um, and then I guess that's like, okay, so now we know Darkseid. Again, just, just to be very clear about this film, Darkseid's in it. A good amount. He's not the villain, though. No, he's not. This is not Darkseid's movie. This is still Steppenwolf. And then that happens. It's the equivalent of almost like Thanos in Guardians of the Galaxy, where very he's much. chilling on the chair. He's just kind of watching things happen. Yeah. Where in this film, Darkseid is just there. We see some battle sequences with him, yeah. for sure. But he's just more like seeing, like, let me see how this plays out before I make my next move. Right. right. Um, and then we get the badass shot of, you know, of everybody posing up a storm. You know what I mean? Out like the, yeah. out of the tunnel. You know, out of the tunnel on the on top of the reactor and just yeah. watching it. I wish that shot held longer. It bothered yeah. me that it faded to black so soon. It fades to black, and then we get epilogue, which I don't have the title card for because it's not revealed. Uh, I, th- I believe it's called Father, Father Twice Over. Father Twice Over. Father yeah. Twice Over. That makes sense. Um. And this is kind of where the film, this is about 25 minutes left in the movie. Yeah, around there. And it was interesting because like, oh, epilogue. Okay, cool. Let's do this. Because again, we hadn't seen Joker yet, which we saw in the trailer. We hadn't seen a nightmare sequence of Batman. We hadn't seen Deathstroke, who we heard was in this movie too. Do we, we is, it, is the ending? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, the, the epilogue. Keep- Getting confused with all these freaking there's a lot there's a lot of plot points and story there's a lot of story there's a here. lot in this movie um, but yeah we get to epilogue we get cyborg kind of repairing the cassette player that his father gave him with it was like a recording of what everything he could do which mm. we heard earlier but now it's like the side two of it is like hearing him saying like now let me talk to you as a father not as a scientist right really nice sequence very nice sequence you know cyborg's listening to that and like he's hearing his father talk to him and it's beautiful we're also getting the scene of like you know um flash going to see his father saying hey i got a job in a crime lab you know my foot's in the door billy crudup is still in jail for killing his wife Mm -hmm. um he's like yeah like my son's in the door his foot's in the door like he's like saying that we see diana uh what's diana up to at this point oh it's diana with bruce right at the at wayne manor yeah, they're they're right. starting the justice. Hall of justice. justice. The start of the Hall of yeah. Justice. We see um, Aquaman. He's like, you know, he talks to Mara and to Volko, saying, like, "Hey, you know what? I'll see you soon. I gotta go see my dad." You know yeah. what I mean? I'm gonna. I'll be in the next movie. up You know, <laughs> you know, I gotta go see my. I gotta go see a. I gotta go see a guy about a girl. I gotta see about a girl. Um. <laughs> so he he goes to he jumps on the back of the pickup truck, which we see we saw that shot of years ago. Now yeah. it feels like, um. And uh, we're, yeah, Cyborg. We're setting up the the we're setting up uh, the Hall of Justice, and then it cuts to I guess Bruce sleeping in bed. Well, we don't know that he's sleeping in bed. It just cuts to the nightmare sequence. Is it, it is the nightmare? Yeah, the nightmare sequence is before. Yeah, the nightmare sequence just kind of happens. It just kind of like all of a sudden it felt like this is an appendage. All of a sudden, I don't know where it's just showing up. Yeah, because I because I even looked at you guys. I'm like, did they just show a title card? Did I just did I just yeah. totally miss the title card? And we didn't. So we're seeing now this nightmare sequence. We're seeing Batman walking around in his nightmare gear. We're seeing straight up the scene from Batman vs Superman. Exactly. Right? We're seeing Mara, and we see that uh, stroke. He's got a nice fade going on. A little mohawk. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. We also forgot to mention we see the um, the Lex Luthor scene too. Oh, the Lex Luthor scene happens, and then the nightmare scene. And then happens. Nightmare yeah. right. happens. It's a Lex Luthor scene. Deathstroke going. Lex reveals to Deathstroke, "Oh, Batman is Bruce Wayne." Yeah. And then it cuts to black, 
cuts to the nightmare sequence. We see uh, Deathstroke, yeah. Mera. And this is the same Lex Luthor you saw at the ending of Justice League of, of Whedon's cut. Yeah. But now it's a little bit more elongated because yeah. they, they dropped the whole Bruce yeah. Wayne and thing. It, and he doesn't say, shouldn't we have a League of Our Own? Like, it doesn't yeah, that's that cut out. Uh, and then, yeah, the nightmare sequence starts. And and then you see Flash wearing his, his uh, Flashpoint suit, I guess, his, or his armor his suit. armor, yeah. That Cyborg's see, there, too. Yeah, that you see in Batman vs. Superman when he comes in, like, Lois, she's the key. Uh, you know, she's the one. And then it cuts to Joker, Mr. Uh, Mr. Leto. Mr. Jared Leto, not dropping any lines about we live in a society. No. You know, we don't see him in his Jesus gear with the th- crown of thorns, which no. we saw in a lot of Photoshop photo shoots, releases. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a full on conversation with him basically taunting Batman about, you know, killing, uh, like if he, like Batman knows all about loss and then Batman just like, you better watch yourself. And right. You fuckhead. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't say, he doesn't, he doesn't call him he a, drops fuck a fuck. Though. He does drop a fuck. Batman and Batman basically tells him like, listen, when I kill you and don't get me wrong, I am going to fucking kill you. And you're just like, holy shit, Batman. Yeah. Um, but it, very interesting. The way it was shot too is like almost out of focus, in focus. Like you can tell it's it's separate from what was shot. You know, it's just it's just very just trying to like get you like in the weird mindset of the Joker. Yeah. Um, Jared Leto again, like he's cool as just Joker, not as a Suicide Squad Joker. Yeah. Like this Joker seen some stuff. You see him in the squad, the squad gear. The sorry, the SWAT, SWAT gear. gear. Yeah. Um, you see him with. Uh, he gives Batman like as long as you have my card, you know I'm. I guess that's his like this thing for Batman, you know like this is this is like you you get you all you all get one you know what i mean yeah Yeah. um there was one thing that they mentioned he mentions to joker about harley quinn well yeah he says like when i was when i was holding harley quinn and she was bleeding out batman saying this to joker right batman saying this to joker is she said to kill you and i'm gonna fucking kill you yeah like he he almost that that was like him taunting joker back right yeah. And he looked at him like, that's my love. Yeah. yeah. Right? It was an interesting s- sequence. I just, I, I would have, again, like, we're getting the scene, and I'm like, but what is this leading to, though? Because, yeah, again, we're going to gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about what that, like, going forward, but, like, man, what's, 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 what's it lead to? And then Bruce wakes up. He's like, oh my god! I'm so- oh, cause, cause Superman lands though. Yeah, because so Cyborg's Superman like, lands. he found us. Yeah. And then and Superman Superman's lands. all evil now. And but guess what like- suit he's wearing? He's now wearing the blue and red suit. That's yeah. where they give him the blue and red yeah, suit. Yeah, that's where they the give it to him with the red eyes. Uh, and he's all like, uh, oh my god! And then he wakes up. Yeah. And then he walks outside of his, you know, nice looking villa. And Martian Manhunter shows up, and he's like, yo, dog. Here's his, <laughs> his, his the sitch. All right. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Man's is coming. Yeah. Get yourself even, ready. Even Bruce, like even Ben Affleck, when he's playing the character, he's like, "Who are you? Yeah. Like, what are you? What are you doing here? Who? What's your purpose? Yeah, yeah. Like, huh? you just Very woke random. me up from sleeping. Yeah, I had a bad dream, man. Give me a second. Like, was this still the dream right yeah. now? Rumor was that it was, or I, I think it could have even been storyboard again. Like, there's like a Mandela effect with this film, where it's like, am I re- misremembering this? That it was supposed to be Green Lanterns that showed up, two Green Lanterns. It was going to be like John Stewart and. Um, either Hal Jordan or another one showing up being like, hey, like, here's the deal. Dark side is coming. For a police agency for the planet, they weren't really good. Yo, these lanterns show, showed up at one point in this story. Yeah. More than freaking Martian Manhunter. Yeah. A green, one green lantern. Well, the green we lantern see got one green lantern killed. and he is the ugliest looking motherfucker. Dude, he is, he is, when he died, I was like, dude, he just put you out of your misery. Yeah. Be, be thankful. And dude, you are not getting a single date. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's swiping left um, on you. But yeah, Martian Manhunter shows up again. Like, you get a better look at him. I'm not a big fan of the character yeah. design. I like um, his cape. Cape is great. He has the big red X. Yeah. Classic look. Um, yeah, you know, like, he shows up. He's basically saying, like, you know, get ready prepare yourself because this is you know basically a warning of like you know we need to have a team ready to go yeah which was very similar to what batman versus superman was setting up for this movie yeah. right and it's just like i've already done this right. i've already saw it. like now we're gonna go through this again yeah and then it ends it ends it leads to nowhere it, and- i mean again again this movie was supposed to be just this uh you know story that this this version of that we never got to see yeah let's get into our actual you know what are our thoughts of this shay start us off please yeah so when this film first started i was uh, a lot of it was me going like oh my god i can't believe we're watching this i still can't believe we watched i can't, it. Still can't believe we watched it um 
and I really, really was digging it. I was really on board. I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. Again, um, I think, uh, sorry, before you finish your thought, okay. I think we were all going through the plot and we were all just kind of just like, oh yeah, this happens, this happens. But right. I think we were all very excited watching it. I oh, want that to be clear that I we were excited clear, watching yeah, this. We had a good time. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I also want to be very transparent by saying this is a four hour movie. Um, and I think that's the crux of this film where initially when they said, oh, it might be a show or a movie, I was like, oh man, I really hope to do a movie. Now, after having watched the movie, I wish they did it as a series because I feel like it's more palatable that way. You can digest it easier. And I think for general audiences, they'll be able to, to understand and grasp this movie a lot more. Whether they did it as a drop all at once or they did a weekly release, um, I think it would have made the story a lot easier to follow. Uh, I had a good time with it. I really liked that those first two hours. The middle portion of it is kind of where it starts to drag a bit and get a little bit slower. And then when it kicks back into high gear, I was like, man, this is so cool. Did I anticipate this being a completely different film from the Whedon cut? No, I, I knew that there'd be a lot of the similarities. Um, but I'm glad that we got this because this was so much better than what we got. Mm-hmm. There's no question this is a better film. A more so coherent film, better. a better acted film, a just a just uh, tonally it's a lot better. Yeah. It's it's a, a so much better movie than what we got um in 2017. And again, I think at the time we didn't hate what we got in 2017, no. but we when we started realizing that like hey, this is really different from what we were supposed to get. Where it's like I think the idea of the Snyder cut was always just like that like, oh my God, like, it's like this magical thing. Like, it is, right. you know, it's like... Does it exist? Does it exist? Is it real? Like, what is it? And I, it still doesn't feel real that we we got to watch it. Yeah. You know, what, do you, what about you, Anthony? Where are you with it right now? You know, when going into this film, I I really thought, you know, keep you keep hearing four hours and you kept hearing they only use less than 25% of footage from, you know, Zach's version and i'm like oh man this movie must be completely what is different it? What this is, is it? a completely different film that we're watching here um but i really that's how that's how i went into it when i started to see oh there are just similarities but a lot of those sequences that really didn't need to be there could be cut out and this movie could have been a combination of zach's vision and just the editing parts of um Whedon put together, it could have been a great film. And I think it would have got better reviews when it came out in 2017. If you kept Apocalypse, sorry, Dark Seed, Dark Side, I can always call him Dark Seed, Dark Side as the, that, that sub villain, it would have been great. I think that whole sequence with Dark Side is great. And Stephen Wolf being, you know, the, still the main villain, but, you know, he eventually would die. I, th- I think that was still great. I think the color correction was great. I thought, Maybe the, you know, the swearing was some at points out of place. It just didn't feel right. But um, I really enjoyed the action sequences. And I re- really enjoyed the beginning of this film and just how it continued from Batman versus Superman. It just made it more cohesive and un- like it just made it completely better. It's interesting that we're, you know, we're in a spot with this movie right now where, you know, like, as we said earlier, like the main kind of story beats are similar, yeah. but it's everything else in between that, like that connective tissue that makes it such a better story. Right. Um, yeah. Cause like, again, like the fight, I, I, I feel like I wasn't as blown away watching it this time only because like the big action set pieces, like, you know, that tunnel scene, the, the fight yes. against Superman the fight at the end, a lot of the money shots and the big scenes we knew were there, um, we got, right? Like, we got in the 2017 version, but again, it's just, the, the factually, like, I don't think there's anybody who could say that 2017 was a better version. Now, obviously, I think we're going to get a lot of those op-eds that say why the 2017 Justice League is a better film oh than the Zack Snyder Justice League. You know, like, they, we're going to get those, but those, it's not true. Those action sequences, even though they are very similar, they, they look better. Now. Because of the color correction, right? I found that this movie was a lot brighter than I expected it to be for um, Zack a, a Zack Snyder film. If you take Batman versus Superman, no matter what who who's on screen, it's a dark film. Like Superman just being in the Daily Bugle, uh, Daily Planet. I would say Daily Bugle, Daily, da- Bugle. <laughs> uh, Daily Planet. Just even that part. It's so dark. It's grainy. It feels 
rough and it feels right rusty. This film didn't have that. It had it, it felt dark, yes, it had dark elements, but it didn't feel it didn't have that character yeah. of, of of his past films. And I think a big component of that is because the aspect ratio is uh, always it's continually like this, you know, the square aspect ratio. It's um, there's some scenes that may not lend itself the best to that aspect mm-hmm. ratio, right? Where I think when because he's re-releasing Batman vs Superman, the whole movie's not in that aspect aspect ratio. It's going to have shifting aspect ratios, and I would have, I maybe would have preferred seeing uh, shifting aspect ratios for this, where the action sequences are nice and tall Mm -hmm. but the um the scenes other scenes were maybe traditional you know letterbox like widescreen like that um you know i'm in i'm in a very interesting spot with this you know we spoke a lot about this last i think we spoke for like an hour alone last night about it Mm -hmm. where we were just kind of talking like yeah like this this was arguably a better movie um there's some amazing sequences in here there's just it's just it's just such an amazing case study of like what we had in 2017 versus where we are now right um but my only thing is, yes, it's expanded and makes more sense. But doesn't make it a doesn't make it the movie that we wanted. We wanted it to be. And I'm not saying as a Snyder cut. I'm just mean as a Justice League movie. Mm-hmm. Is this a good movie? I think it is a good movie. But it's also not the movie that I think we need to be getting out of DC. Yeah, I yeah. think um, as 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 storylines go and as writing goes, this is that's where the film falters the most. But as visuals and action, it, it, it excels. Mm-hmm. It's really cool to watch. But when you really start to pay attention to the film, that's where the film really starts to falter. Because weird, you know, writing d- decisions. Like when I look back, when we looked, we talked about in the beginning about Man of Steel and how that was written by David Escoyer. That felt like an actual screenwriter writing it because the story at least felt like it had decisions being made and it. it was something to, that you could follow along with. And this one, again, way too complicated what you're trying to tell us and explain to us in such a, in, well, in four hours as well. So that's where the film struggles for me the most, but did I have fun watching it? Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I had so much fun watching yeah. it. And, I, and I'm excited. I'm excited to own it and watch it in 4K. Um, but this is one of those movies that I, I may treat it like, a series in a way where I might not watch it all in one that sitting maybe part again. one just today or just part one. And then maybe I'll go back to part two or three and that's how I'll kind of like decide to watch it. But man, is it doesn't, it just shits on the weed and cut. There's yeah. no there. Yeah. It's, it's just, there's no basis to say in the weed. The only thing the weed and cut has over this one, I would say is just somehow again, for better or for worse, keeping it short and getting kind of getting to each point maybe mm-hmm. faster, which definitely th- I think this film could have lost an hour maybe yeah. of it just kind of refining mm-hmm. everything and, yeah. and telling a great story that way. Yeah. Um, also, I think I like the ending because like having the, the whole, um, I guess, nightmare sequence at the end of the film, you know, it frames things a lot differently, right? Than I think than we anticipated where in Batman vs Superman, he has that vision at the beginning mm-hmm. closer to the beginning of that and then kind of sets him on his path yeah. where this one we have our heroes coming together and you know we have the nightmare sequence at the end where again like does like it just leaves you like oh man like it's such a cliffhanger ish it really ending, is a cliffhanger, where you're just like yeah. man like are, we're probably never going to see this come to fruition yeah and it's just like man like I love that we saw it, but I'm also just like, man, we're never going to see this paid off. No, I don't. I, I honestly don't think we're going to see this paid off. No. Even in um, the Flash movie, like I don't think they're going to pull no. up these these uh, plot threads here. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's I, DC did this to themselves. So, Warner, Warner, Brothers. War, Warner Brothers and DC, because you know Jeff Johns being a big part of this film as well. And um, was he credited it, at all on this movie? Jeff Johns. Yeah, I don't think he was credited on this film. Yeah. Being, I'm this, not 100 percent sure on that. Uh, did I see him? He was like executive produced. Maybe he was on it. Produced. Yeah, maybe I he was executive producer on it. I, Nolan and um, Emma Thomas. Emma Thomas are on it, which I was surprised because they which weren't. Makes sense, they, they weren't on it because they weren't on the original. Yeah, but just the complicated story that they told, it just couldn't be done in a, one movie. No. Even if it was seven hours long, it just no. couldn't be done. This is like, like realistically, this is like four or five story arcs in this film that uh-huh. could have been established. Like Cyborg's whole thing, it was should have been its own movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dark Side and Steppenwolf being introduced should have happened in a different movie. Like the all of the things that are happening, it's it's a lot. Like I just wish that it was a simpler. Again, we were talking last night about the first Avengers film, 
and you go back to it compared to let's say to Endgame, and it's like the first Avengers film is such a basic plot. It's team coming together, team having issues, team getting over those issues and fighting the bad guy, the bad guy who was already introduced in a movie before, right? Like I don't count Seven Wolf being introduced in Batman vs Superman because one that was a deleted scene, right? That wasn't in the and that was and then only added in the Ultimate Cut, and he he was just there in the Ultimate Cut. He didn't say or do anything. No, he was just like. Ooh. He's like, look at these square box, these, these look boxes. At this stuff. Isn't it neat? You know what I mean? But like, it, it just made it. What I was trying to get at, DC doesn't help with the way they do their comics because they're so heavy and so nerdy in a sense. Right. They compare it to Marvel, where if you try to translate these stories to film, they just there's it's it it'll be thrown over the the. The, the total viewers, consumer, yeah. yeah, who they're trying to market. They're not trying yeah. to market to me and you, and and Shay. They're trying hey, to market to me. make a billion dollars. But but I also think DC does have like letter graphic novels and stuff they put out, right? Like there is that whole Superman smashes the clan graphic novel, which was skewed younger, which came out last year. Like I think there's there's so much like potential for DC to tell these stories, but. You know, when you obviously when you get a voice like Zack Snyder and you know, you brought him to do Man of Steel, you brought him to do Batman or Superman, you you got cold feet, which I, I get once Justice League came around. But like for everything that happened, like it doesn't make sense to one, give us the film that we got in 2017 because it was just a Frankenstein of a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but then now, like we're having like this very dark story, like there's just there's so much movie here, I think is what we kept Correct. saying. There's just so much movie in this cut. And I'm really curious to see what the reaction is going to be to it. I think yeah. the Snyder fan base that have been, us included, who've been wanting to see it, are going to be happy. And I think we're satisfied. But are we, do we, is this the story that we always wanted from a Justice League movie? No. I think how Anthony mentioned it in the beginning, and one of the things that I also kind of brought up before was, I am, I can now close the book. I can now say, yes. hey, listen, yeah. we're done. Like, we're, we're good to move on. Um, because I, I made my peace with it. I, I've made my peace now with Zack Snyder's vision, and I got what I needed, and, and I'm good. Um, whatever DC films we get in the future, I'm going to just treat them as their own story. I no longer see a connective tissue amongst these films. Um, I know we might get Ben, or we're going to get Ben in, in, in the Flash film and everything, but I, I can't see how they'll tie it into what happened before. And if they do, sure, we'll see it then. But as of right now, I I felt satisfied and I felt like okay, uh, the chapter's closed for me. Yeah, I I think I'm there too. You know, like I'm I'm happy we we finally got it. You know, I'm like you said, Shay. Like I'm excited to own this film and to have it to, to be able to see it in 4K when I uh, want to go back and revisit it. But you know, I'm I think I'm ready now to just close this Zack Snyder chapter. Mm-hmm. I want to see Zack continue to make his movies. I'm excited for Army of the Dead. Yeah, but I'm also excited to see what comes next. I'm excited to see. Robert Pattinson is Batman. Oh, I'm buddy. excited to see that Batman movie. Yeah. I'm excited to see what comes next with Superman, regardless of whatever form. I just want to see the character of Superman on screen with Wonder Woman. It's it's funny because like you know we watch this film and then um you you see Justice League in 2017 and then you see what came after it. We had a, a over a year later until we got a sequel. Any type of follow up was Aquaman, which was a very bright and colorful movie compared to what we got. Right. And he, he made him a lot funnier of a character. Yeah. You know, we got uh, Shazam that came out. Yeah. We got um, Birds of Prey that came out. We got a, a Joker standalone film, not within not the DCEU. The DCU yeah. And then we got Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah. Tonally, all very different films from Everywhere. what we got from the Snyder films. Yeah. And I think DC at this point and Warner Brothers are ready to move on. Of course, this is an HBO Max slash production which we're getting on crave here in canada um i don't think we're getting any type of you know continuation from this other than maybe like hints of it in the flash maybe but i don't i don't see any type of more payoff i don't think we're going to see uh joe Manangelio come back as no. deathstroke i don't think we're going to see amber heard as mara oh especially not yeah. uh, you know i don't think we're going to see cyborg anymore especially with with everything with ray, ray fisher, fisher and warner yeah. brothers i think that just that the Story, that, that plot point is going to kind of die on the vine and you know they're going to close that that plot point a couple things sorry go ahead no yeah no i 100 percent agree um i was going to ask do you believe that do you think that there will be a, a second you know 
Justice League. Zack Snyder's? Zack Snyder's. I think there will be another loud fan base, but I don't know if... I, I think HBO Max and Warner Brothers are going to sit on this and see how well it does for them to justify another $150, $200 million budget and getting all these actors back into place. And that's the thing, right? It's like... Warner Brothers is going to be like, yeah, but they're under contract with us, not with HBO Max. Like, they're going to, yeah. I feel like they're going to really kind of play a petty game here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These characters are going to be locked up because, again, HBO Max, yes, it's under the umbrella of Warner Media, the same company, but they're not the same. Like, no. Warner Brothers Pictures and, you know, Warner Brothers itself is not marketing this movie at no. all. It's not their film they're marketing. No. Um, I wonder if, uh, I could even see like an animated movie. You know, like honestly, like I could see like a DC animated film sequel to the Justice League in this form. I don't know. I don't know. What were you gonna say? You're saying a couple yeah, things. Yeah, two things I just want to touch on is um, Cyborg's character in the Joss Whedon film, and this one, very different characters. Mm-hmm. He's totally a different. Lot more like fun and hey, let me make a joke here or riding Booyah! over yet. You, you know, know? In, in um and like laughing a lot. And this one, he's and in Zack Snyder's, he's very stoic and and just upset and. Literally Dark. says, fuck the world. Yeah, one. he says, fuck the world. The F-bombs are really random, but yeah. But one thing that I want to touch on really quickly is score. Tom Wolkenberg does the score for this film, and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a really good yeah. score. It's it, really good. It's just amazing hearing these themes. Again, you're not throwing out these themes that have been established in this world. You have the Man of Steel theme. You're hearing his flight theme. You're hearing a little bit of the Nightmare theme. You're hearing these themes that were established in this world. They're not just thrown out. They're no. here, and they're at the forefront, and they sound amazing. And yeah. Wonder Woman's theme, you know, yeah. it's awesome. And even the ones that he starts to create for this movie originally, yeah. there's so much. Like that Flash cool theme where he's going to cool. go through back through time, like, Awesome. I can't wait because the soundtrack is going to be coming out on the 18th. I can't wait to have it and listen to it because I, like we said before on the show, if you've listened to our episodes, nothing hurt me more than listening to that, that Justice League score that night it came out. And I was like, man, like this is not good. Like, what did Danny Elfman do? Like, why? Like, why do we go down this route? Mm-hmm. Man. So I guess, is it time to give our recommendations? I think so. Our official recommendations? Let's start off with A for Danny Anthony. <laughs> I would so if you're a fan of uh DC characters and at least you know Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, I encourage you to watch um Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm-hmm. I think it's the better of the two. Um uh, it is the most cohesive. It works well with the other films if you were to watch them all as this <laughs> one big trilogy. I Thoroughly enjoyed the the action sequences. There is a lot that needs to be shaved off, and you're right, Shay. I probably would watch this as like an hour here, two hours here type of thing. It's just yeah. a lot of story that is no need, is not needed. It doesn't help pro like move the story faster. Uh, the only thing that would help this movie is if everyone had their own movie before this movie. Mm. But um, yeah, I would encourage you to watch it, and and, and I recommend it. Yeah. It's the better Justice League. Yeah. It's the one that should they should have shown. Yeah, but shorter. Finessed, finessed, finessed. Yeah, yeah. Daniel. Uh, with myself, you know, I'm exactly with Anthony. I think you're going to fall into two camps with this movie. You're either going to if you're if you're interested remotely in this, you're going to watch it. Yeah. If you don't care about Zack Snyder's Justice League before. You're not going to care about it now. So no. I wouldn't recommend it. If you if you were ever on the fence about, you're like, you know what? I don't like these movies. Then don't watch it. This film is the payoff for the fans who have been campaigning for so long. This is a payoff for Zack Snyder, who's been wanting to, um, who wanted to get this version made and couldn't. Um, and this is just truly at the end of the day for for the fans of this series who who've been on board with it, who've loved with been who who have loved what Zack has been doing. Um, I'm going to say watch it. You know, this is, this is without a doubt the better film. Mm -hmm. This is the film that going forward, when we think of Justice League, I want people to think of this movie. I don't want people to think of the 2017 abomination that we got, that Frankenstein of a film that we got. Um, This is the Justice League film that should live on for better or for worse. Again, I'm not entirely in love with it in terms of like the story of where we got but it is the better film, and I think this is the film that deserves to be watched. Yeah. So definitely check it out. Yeah, yes, yeah, same thing as you guys. Um, if you're if you're one of the people that was campaigning for this film, you're already gonna go watch it, and you're gonna have a great time with it. 
Um, this is a love letter to the fans. This is a love letter to his daughter, who the, the film ends with. For it's Autumn. Title card for Autumn. Um, again, if you didn't like Zack Snyder before, if you haven't liked the DCU before, this is definitely not going to change your perspective on that. And if you were the loud voice that hated him, not going to change your vo- opinion on him. So, not at all. Watch this movie. If you fall in the camp of loving these characters, if you fall in the camp of wanting to see this film, um, and if you're someone that's curious about it, I would say watch this episodically because maybe then you'll have a much better time with it. Yeah, and I mean, the nice thing is this film is broken into parts. So if you want to go part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, like you could do that. Take some, take some breaks. Yeah. That was a tongue twister to say. Yeah, I was like, was part, 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 or epilogue, part right? Seven. Epilogue, yeah. part seven. You know? yeah. No after credit scenes. No. No after credit scenes. So that epilogue I, really covers that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm excited. Like we're, we're recording this before our conversation with Sean O'Connell. So I'm excited to talk with him this week about this film. Yeah. See learn more about the behind the scenes of everything. Obviously his book is out now, release the Snyder cut. You could buy it on Amazon or digital bookstores. Um, you know, I'm just really excited. It's going to be a really fun week this week that we're listening to it because, you know, we have Snyder cut releasing on Friday. We have Falcon and the winter soldier coming out this week as well too. Um, and South by Southwest. So there's a lot of things happening on the movie podcast feed. Yeah. So please stay tuned. Again, you can follow us at the movie podcast on Instagram and Twitter. We have new episodes every Monday and we are getting so close episode 100 daniel we're so we're, close we're on the cusp we're on yeah. the cusp of it anthony you excited for 100 yes 100 episodes we should yeah. get zach on the show zach snyder like you should zach, just join us zach, man. zach yes zach yes zach yeah. if you're listening up uh, come on the show <laughs> he hates that i hate being called oh uh, man I well i mean because your name's anthony too i think i would hate it too if you were called zachy no he's saying no, i was referring to zach snyder yeah. if he was listening oh. he probably hate I was calling him Zachy. Oh, yeah. probably. Or yeah, she's like, oh, my mom used to call me that. <laughs> Zachary. Zachary yeah. Snyder. Please come down to the principal's office. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that was this time with the movie podcast, and we'll see you next.